the Nobel Prize winning economic theory, Modigliani Miller theorem, was the observations of the mistakes made by central banks. If you listened to my last podcast, then you'd understand how these policies resulted in the transfer of wealth events, which is exactly what Miller was most interested in studying when it came to central bank policies. In today's world, the forces driving the proof of theorems are not solely central banks and politics, but instead a shift in power between individuals and organizations through the use and control of technology. Today, we're going into how nature and the animal kingdom can help us understand what is happening as technology collides with human instincts and institutions. We're going to dive into evolutionary game theory, where Web 4.0 creates new access and aspects for all of our lives due to smarter digital ledger technology, also known as blockchain, smart contracts, and smart machines like AI, and what I call the programmable tokens underlying the shift. Here is a prediction based on the evolutionary game theory, or EGT. As we are entering the distributed Web 4.0, wealth will move away from large centralized companies to smaller distributed market players and clusters across industry. This change is already occurring. As tech giants continue to seek more influence over our lives and economy than ever before, technologies like blockchain and AI are emerging and releasing to individuals. Who will win the race to best utilize this new emerging power on the web? How will it play out? What does the introduction of privacy and authentication mean? Why does it matter in the creation of the next generation of connections? And why is it based on trustonomics? Interestingly, we can go back to the evolution of game theory to answer these questions. We can see, perhaps even predict outcomes through nature and species, the competition for resources and survival. Game theory is used in many areas, from supply chain and operational research to finance, economics, politics, insurance, marketing, military strategy, energy, and computational development. It's the mathematical representation behind models that seek to predict outcomes between independent players, rational and irrational events, and motivations of populations given a set of variables. From cybersecurity to cloud computing and financial sciences, it's evolved predicting and modeling your responses, whether you're aware of it or not. Merton Miller noted that for every winner, there is always a loser. Unfortunately, individuals utilizing cloud and today's computing, especially in business software as a service model, have been left on the losing side of this game equation. The money-making models created by tech giants rely heavily upon data collection and software licensing, thus allowing these centralized forces to maintain their current power levels based on limiting access to those resources and information. The data storage and analysis algorithm are the tools of this game, which come at high and sometimes devastating cost. During the early 1980s, a study was published called Evolutionary Stable Strategy, or ESS, by Joseph Maynard Smith. It wasn't computers or even people's actions that Smith studied. It was nature, animals, particularly illustrated by the battle for territory, resources, predator and prey between hawks and doves. In a battle between a hawk and a dove, the dove reasons it's most logical to retreat. In a battle between two hawks, there's going to be a fight, which has the probability of one of the hawks being injured and losing. So in a world of all doves, it would be a nice place to live. No one gets too aggressive. The doves are fine until a hawk shows up. That would be called 
in ESS a mutant event and would destroy the ESS or stable strategy in the Dove community. So in reality, no ESS or stability for the Doves ever really existed. It was not impervious to the mutant hawk attack. Likewise, in an all hawk world, the hawks will constantly be fighting. They'll be looking for territory and causing injuries that will be common where all variables between the hawks are generally the same. The population will suffer from a high health damage. Now, when a dove shows up, it will do a lot better in gaining resources in a world of exhausted or injured hawks. Perhaps we can think today of mass layoffs and the great resignations as a place where employment was beat up from the hawk world. In the dove world, it was just a matter of time before the mutant event happened. In the hawk world, it was based on endurance or time, which is who gets worn out or loses the war of attrition to claim a victory while fighting hard to create the opponent's retreat or injury. The layoffs demonstrated that neither the hawks or the doves came out with an ESS or a stable strategy. However, when there's a balance of hawks and doves in equilibrium as during the days of a lot of money flooding the system, the species as a matter of survival and resources simulated an ESS. And the predator prey motivations were fairly stable. At first glance, it appeared that was a stable existence, an ideal ESS. That was kind of like the evolution of the early internet through about the end of Web 2.0. Today, we see the hawk and dove game happening in many areas beyond employment and the web. The hawk and dove game of stability was fine until the COVID pandemic hit and CEOs return to work policies versus workers' expectations that they could work from anywhere started colliding due to the events that brought to light the opportunity to work on terms that were more favorable to the employees. Today, we see tech companies approaching layoffs and being rewarded by shareholders through short-term price bumps for making these cuts. None of these scenarios can be described as an ESS, and today's internet is not an ESS either. ESS doesn't stop with hawks and doves. The idea of an evolutionary stable strategy is based on variables that are, well, evolutionary. So an interesting thing happens when a new variable is created, a variable like a retaliatory event. In the case of two birds, when a new neighbor shows up, for example, an owl, that has the wise idea to act in a way that pits hawk against hawk, but neither acting completely like a dove or like a hawk, the owl creates a new dynamic in the environment. Unless it was easy prey, say an injured hawk, the owl would take the best action to its resources, this third variable actually creates a pure ESS. Hawks are less likely to go after one another. Even an injured hawk probably isn't threatened by a dove. And the doves are now more wary and become more adept. The owl brings in a new balance 
that delivers through the evolutionary process a stable strategy, ESS, that creates how to best utilize resources. The factors that drive nature are the same elements that drive our natural instincts and economic, political, and social outcomes. Elements introduced into a sleepy dove-like era by a mutant event, such as the COVID pandemic, woke the world up to the hawks and doves' operational structures. Another mutant event, the invasion by Russia, put the European continent and the world on high alert for the first time in 77 years since the end of World War II. In the case of a mutant event, the scales tip and the evolution begins toward a more pure, stronger ESS or the possibility that any ESS could be completely eliminated. The introduction of a retaliatory event like the owl entering into the hawks and doves territory where the owl uses a strategy to best maximize its returns on the resources will drive what is not a pure ESS toward a more pure, stable strategy that is more impervious to mutant attacks. The pure intent and capability of the blockchain turned into more of a mutant event as the advantages of this new technology were not explored for the technology itself, what the blockchain could do, but more for a differentiated game of hawks and doves. It became a mutant event. The hawks that took the complexity of the technology battled out against each other and against existing financial systems while preying on the doves who tried to participate in the end being left with a destroyed ecosystem in the wake of collapses like FTX. What can prevent a mutant event? In other words, an evolution where the owl represents and creates the strengths of the EFS. What can prevent mutant events? In other words, create an evolution where the event of the owl represents strength for the ESS. The natural order of hawks, doves, and owls coexisting becomes stronger. The introduction of a new event, the privacy and authentication protocol, where the control over the technology, the web, and the data is distributed alongside access to the resources of the technology software and tools in a way that reaches the maximum amount of the population and the evolutionary stability strategy, ESS, can be more impervious to mutant events. Hi, I'm Tim Vasco, founder of Trustonomics and Bloxerts. In this podcast series, I'm talking about the transition to Web 4.0. The world is rapidly changing into something new and exciting. Let's explore it more together. As Web 3.0 technologies like crypto, blockchain, and AI grew in popularity, major tech companies that prospered in Web 2.0, such as Facebook Meta, Google, Salesforce, Slack, Twitter, Microsoft, and Apple have been developing a hawkish strategy. Once the blockchain emerged, a potential owl in the wisdom of the internet, the evolution started. However, until the crash of the massive uptick driven by COVID and the crypto hype, what appeared to be building as a new stable strategy was missing an element, the owl. It was simply another hawkish stance, or perhaps in the case of FTX, a fox in the hen house. With authentication and data privacy being held by users, the owl actually has the opportunity to enter the game. An 
evolutionary stable strategy. This approach poses an imminent threat to existing infrastructures that must, in the future, either adapt or be eliminated. Now, this isn't new. This is evolutionary game theory. Game theory dates back all the way to the 1860s. Without data distribution in our world today, privacy control and authentication, an ESS will not form. That's why at BlockSerts, for well over a decade, we sought to introduce the tools and resources that will create this event, deliver a more stable structure and strategy for the web. That's what we call Web 4.0. The question is, what can you do to be part of that evolution? And the fact is, you already are. These Trustonomic podcasts are set out to give you the background of events happening today and historical reference as well as ideas from theories and modeling done by Nobel Prize winning academic scholars so you can choose your position in the evolution. Every major economic model has the potential to undergo tremendous transformation through events such as technological advancements. A clear example of this is drastically altered global finance, social and cultural awareness, power dynamics across the world, including supply chains and how people work. Current technologies by like blockchain and AI more available to individuals exercise more autonomy in controlling digital destinies for individuals are essential because without these resources, whether you're a hawk, a dove, or an owl, you're left to the forces of an unstable strategy in the world. Throughout history, we've seen a shift in the way people use different technologies, from automobiles replacing horses to streaming movies and YouTube content crushing the market for rented video and television. The business of the web is transitioning from a data-driven digital ad, search engine, optimized news, blog, and social media feed world to one of authenticated autonomous identity and technological strength or an ESS through secure data ownership enabled by blockchain technology, access to information strengthened by the power of machine learning and AI. This is the wise owl that's changing the game. The creation of barriers versus the breaking down of technical walls is all related to the factors in game theory. A great movie, A Beautiful Mind, starring Russell Crowe, was a true story based on Nobel Prize winning mathematician John Nash's creation of the Nash Equilibrium. The Nash game theory model is a mathematical proof that success comes when you create leverage or an advantage over others. The Nash Equilibrium revealed that the outcome of any game for each decision maker, or in the case of technology, you as a user, depends on both their own choices and those made by other players. Consequently, attempting to predict the decision of multiple participants, if these decisions are examined independently, is futile. The centralized models of technology today has created major players who by storing and leveraging personal data can attain an advantage over every user and accurately anticipate, in most cases, what decisions are likely to be made. That was one of the key issues during the Cambridge Analytica Facebook data scandal back in 2016. They were aiming to shape political outcomes. John Nash's game theory was an extension of ideas that go all the way back to 1883 oligopolary theory by Antonio Agustin Cornutz. We're living proofs of these theorems playing out in real life today. Private companies have 
often possessed significant influence throughout history using game theory models. To demonstrate the power of infrastructure command, we can go all the way back to the east-west spice and tea trade on sailing ships. The renowned clipper, the Cuddy Sark, is particularly remembered for its extraordinary speed to reach the market ahead of rivals, thus enabling its owners to set up higher prices for her cargo ahead of other competitors. The reason behind this was that it arrived with the goods and further details before anyone else could compare the price or verify information that was used by the Cuddy Sark crew and owners for setting the price of the goods. The captain, crew, and owners were privy to market information before anyone else knew, giving them a profitable edge when selling to the market. They already knew whether a surplus of goods would lead to lower prices when the rest of the ships arrived or fewer supplies, so they could reap the immense profits ahead of everybody else. A captivating book called The Merchant Kings when Companies Ruled the World from 1600 to 1900 is an exploration into these extraordinary establishments that were governed by powerful individuals. These influential figures gathered great wealth, which centuries later are iconic names and institutions we know, such as Cecil Rhodes of Rhodes Scholarship, De Beers Diamonds, and the Hudson's Bay Company. This was the initial era of globalization commerce. This month ushers in a revolutionary period for digital globalization and celebrates the 50th anniversary of ARPANET's launch, the precursor to today's internet protocol. As we enter this new epic here at Trustonomics Podcast, we are providing listeners with exclusive insights into how these forces will interact and affect our future. Breaking down game theory to understand how they influence major events so you can stay informed to trust enabling economics. John Maynard Smith pioneered the ESS about the time the internet was introduced. The internet was a retaliatory event. The theory indicated that the population must be defended from any foreign strategies to make them more fit than any mutant strategy. If you and I adopt control over our identities, data, and software applications through Web 4.0, we will create a more sound web for ourselves and one that provides greater benefit to all users than what has evolved from centralized organizations strategies during the past half century since the introduction of the internet. The COVID pandemic forced organizations to adopt an amalgamated working model. Furthermore, mutant events like cyber threats growing make it imperative for businesses and individuals alike to be aware of their information security. This concept called the balance of power, how to harness models inside the technology that secures our futures. Google search engines, blogs, YouTube, Netflix streaming media revolutionized the media landscape, not only shifted wealth from traditional newspapers and traditional television networks and magazines, to the tech giants, it also altered society in drastic ways. Bitcoin was first introduced on the blockchain in 2008. We've only witnessed a fraction of its retaliatory effect. Blockchain technology has been around for about 15 years, and fintech models that were beginning to challenge banks like never before emerged shortly after. When Wall Street bets caused a meteoric rise in a stock called GameStop, it's clear how powerful information can move markets within minutes. 
The game theory concept that's been used to explain information and equilibriums throughout the centuries states that the principle of mini-max or minimizing losses while your opponent seeks to maximize them is what drives volatility or stability in different markets. Just a few months ago, a revolutionary AI hit the internet. It's called ChatGPT or Generative Pre-Training Transformer a platform with an astounding immediate claim that it was worth $29 billion. Microsoft is now rumored to be considering an investment of $10 billion in this technology as a way to remain competitive or possibly as a way to gain control over something unique. Much like the Cuddy Starks when it portaged into English ports. What lies beneath all of these moves is game theory in action. Intelligent decisions, maneuvers by the players for their own benefit. So as our world steps into a new Web 4.0 era, Boxerts has been building a secure virtual space platform. Technology that creates equality as the first Turing complete user internet. I'll discuss more about Turing completeness in my upcoming podcasts. Thanks to this cutting edge innovation, users can now control greater aspects of their digital lives, work and resources than they ever have before with more privacy and more security through authentication. This is an opportunity that's essential for this next development of our highly connected and competitive environment to establish ESF. Web 4.0 grants everyone the ability to utilize their own individual approach when it comes to attaining their desired objectives. It doesn't matter if you're a hawk or a dove or an owl. The possession of business data and how it is managed. Instead of third party entities that are powerful, controlling the data and the tools, reaping financial benefits from brokering your information, either back in the form of license fees or to others in the form of advertising and sales, Web 4.0 creates a retaliatory event and firmly puts back each user's or business's hands the tools of the game. Having autonomy over these capabilities will drive different models for earning wages and will drive a different aspect of how software technology and digital tools are understood. Technology and digital are no longer services of business operations, they are utilities, the foundation of our businesses and our lives. In other words, what started as a service is now a critical technological foundational asset. So when we consider evolution, very much like your office or your home or your car, If you wouldn't leave the keys to any of those openly accessible to third parties that you don't even know, then you shouldn't be doing that in your digital world in the future. We all have the right to control our digital information and activities that occur online. To be an integral part of this digital transformation and ensure your highest possible success, you have to have access to a safe and structured virtual environment that you're in control of taking where you wish. By taking small steps as a player and a winner in this transformation, you can reap rewards down the road. 
there's a concept in Japanese business called Kaizen, which signifies the idea of taking small steps to achieve continuous growth and improvement. This age-old wisdom encourages us to start somewhere in order to reach our goals. This has been a brief introduction to the foundations of game theory that are at play. On my upcoming podcast, we'll explore the present day implications of the Turing Complete Web through blockchain AI and secure virtual space technology coming together to give you boundless opportunities to live life on your own terms, a shift in the balance of power. More about how you can engage and garner the benefits of game theory, web 4.0, the new technologies emerging are available at blockcerts.com and can be seen in our videos on YouTube at the world from here. I'm Tim Vasco. Thank you for joining me until next time. This podcast is based on information, research, and articles discovered through a search by the author. Full accuracy cannot be assured. The views and ideas in this audio are those of the author, making reference to materials reviewed. Observations and opinions are not intended as advice and should not be construed in any manner, are solely the expression of thoughts by the author. All information is copyright reserved by the creator of this podcast.